a popular product recalled from the shelves. And a look at one community's effort to fight world hunger. These stories and more, Alexa starts right now. Good evening and welcome to this week's edition of HPUL Access. I'm Anna Harris. And I'm Reese Allen. Popular body moisturizer has been recalled for possible bacteria contamination. Cow USA Incorporated of Cincinnati is asking their customers to check their bottles of Jurgens Ultra Healing Moisturizer. The three ounce and 10 ounce sizes could qualify as part of the recall. The company said that bottles manufactured between October 1st and October 18th of 2021 could contain a bacteria that can pose a risk for infection in weakened immune systems. Cow Incorporated released a statement that said, and I quote, we are working with our partners on improved cleaning and sanitization practices so that similar issues can be prevented in the future, end quote. The products are being pulled from shelves and warehouses. The company encourages its customers to check their bottles before throwing them away. This week, the Supreme Court confirmation hearings began for Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson. She is President Biden's nomination for the Supreme Court seat that opened following Stephen Breyer's retirement. Jackson's nomination makes huge strides and is historic for many reasons. If elected to the Supreme Court, Jackson would be the first black woman to be a Supreme Court justice. She would also be the first justice who has worked as a public defender. Additionally, Jackson could also be the second youngest justice at age 51 behind Amy Comey Barrett. If confirmed at the end of the hearings, Jackson's addition to the Supreme Court would maintain the court makeup with a three to six conservative majority. Now let's head over to campus update reporter Lizbeth Ramirez to hear the latest about what's going on at HPU. Lizbeth. Here with this week's campus update, I'm Lizbeth Ramirez. First, remember to vote in the student body president election on HPU Connect. Voting closes tonight at midnight and results will be announced tomorrow on the SGA social media. In other news, the Princeton Review recently named HPU's game design program as one of the top 50 in the country. This program within the Nito R. Cubain School of Communication has received this honor once before and is the only program in the state to be recognized in 2022. Finally, be sure to check out some of the events going on across campus this week. Weekly Chapel will be held on Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. and the Wannick Cinema will screen Encanto at 9 p.m. on Thursday, followed by Parasite at 9 p.m. on Friday. That's all for this week's campus update. Back to you guys. I am very excited for these student body president nominees and I'm really excited to see what happens in the next few days. What about you? Yeah, I know it's been really high energy and mm -hmm. everybody's just been talking about, oh my gosh, they're doing this on their campaign and they're doing that. Mm -hmm. So I think it should be really interesting to see when it comes down to who's going to be president for next year and what they're going to do with leading. I know. And best of luck to those nominated. Mm -hmm. So thank you for the update, Lizbeth. Over to you, Brooke, with the sports. Thanks guys. Coming back from the break, we hear about a season milestone for the Panthers on the diamond and how teams across the country competed at Vert Stadium this past weekend. Stay tuned. All access will be right back. Welcome to High Point University. On this campus, we are focused on preparing students for the world as it is going to be. Hi, I'm Steve Wozniak, the Woz, and I'm proud to be High Point University's innovator in residence. I'm Sint Marshall, CEO of the Dallas Mavericks, and I am proud to be High Point University's sports executive in residence. I'm Mark Randolph, and I'm proud to be the entrepreneur in residence at the premier life skills university, High Point University. I don't remember how it started. Go to that. Oh Our back and forth. It always came back. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word.
I'm not gonna pay for this. Myth. I can party with people as long as they don't have symptoms. That myth is false. As we've seen, up to 40% of people who have COVID-19 are asymptomatic and can pass it on to others. So I'd recommend avoiding any social parties, especially indoor ones. If you want to try to socialize but reduce your risk, I'd recommend meeting outside in small groups, continuing to wear a mask, and socially distancing from others if you can. Then together, we can keep COVID-19 out of school. For ways to keep your community safe, go to backtoschooltogether.com. Welcome back to All Access. Our sports reporter, Brooke Ruffin, has the latest on what's happening in the world of HPU athletics. Tell us what's up, Brooke. Thanks, guys. It's officially spring. Let's spring forward as outside sports are heating up for the Panthers. First up on the diamond, baseball earned their first conference series win 3-2 against Gardner-Webb on Sunday. In the three-game series matchup in Bowling Springs, the Panthers responded to day one 8-3 loss with a 12-2 victory Saturday to even up the series. On Saturday, Teddy Merritt earned his first win on the mound, and Everett Vaughn finished the day on the mound by picking up his first career save, striking out three batters and giving up only one hit. Autumn Stewart led the Panthers with four hits on the day. On Sunday, Sean Duffy had his first win on the mound, while Reed Varr recorded his first save of the year. Ending the game in the ninth inning, Melton threw out batter at first base to end the game, giving HBU series the win. Come cheer on the Panthers as they play Winthrop this Friday at Willard Stadium at 6 p.m. From the Diamonds to the track, High Point men's and women's track hosted the annual Big Bill Webb Combined Events Bob Dav Davidson Memorial this past weekend. In the field included three ACC teams in Duke, North Carolina, and Wake Forest. It was their first outdoor meet of the season, and new Panther records were broken on the new purple track. For the men, Darren Dudley and Chris Knight Van Nykirk broke records in the 100-meter dash and discus. Dudley ran a time of 10.22 seconds in the 100-meter dash, the second fastest time in the country and possibly might qualify him for the 2022 NCAA Regionals. Chris Van Nykirk broke his own school record with a throw of 58.66 meters and won his event. Additionally, Freddie Allen III won the long jump with a mark of 7.26 meters. Johnny House won the 800 meter with a time of 1 minute and 55 seconds. And it was a top three sweep in the 5,000 meter as Hunter Steenow came in first, Ian Miller in second, and Lorenzo Botter finishing in third. For the women, Niley Facey set a new school record in the 100 meter hurdles with a time of 13.18 seconds, which broke her own record from the 2021 Big South Outdoor Championships. Additionally, pole vaulter Mackenzie Horn won the elite final, and Rachel Vesper earned a top five finish. With a final push, Abigail Craig helped the 4x400 relay finish in third, and Alicia Donson finished second in the long jump. On the distance side, Sydney Baggis finished third in the 1500 meters. Up next, the track and field teams will travel to Raleigh for the Raleigh relays in Austin for the Texas State Invitational. That's all for your All Access Sports Update. I'm Brooke Ruffin. Back to the desk. Thank you, Brooke. Now we're joined at the desk by political correspondent Will O'Brien. What's going on, Will? Thanks, Anna. First in this week's politics update, Republican Representative Don Young of Alaska passed away on Friday night at the age of 88 at LAX on his way back to Alaska. Young, winning 25 consecutive terms, was the longest serving member of the House after winning a special congressional election in 1973. Young's office putting out this statement, quote, it's with heavy hearts and deep sadness that we announce Congressman Don Young, the Dean of the House and revered champion for Alaska, passed away today while traveling home to Alaska to be with the state and the people that he loved. His beloved wife, Anne, was by his side. Young also leaves behind two children. The cause of death is not yet known. So another great one has left us, mm -hmm. and I just learned of the death of Madeleine Albright today. Mm -hmm. It seems that all the adults we need are leaving us right when we need them most. I know, right? Yeah. And it, obviously, all of our hearts are out with Young's family during this time right now, but he definitely lived a very successful Absolutely. life in the political world. Of course. Another top Russian general was killed Saturday after Ukrainian forces destroyed a Russian-occupied airfield in the port city of Kyrgyzstan. Lieutenant General Andrei Mordbikev was the commander of the 8th Army in the Southern Military District. Mordbikev's death does not come at a good time for Russia, considering President Vladimir Putin held a rally on, in Moscow on Friday night trying to defend and justify his invasion of Ukraine. And according to our reports, the 200,000 people in attendance were, were forced to go by getting relieved of work duties. In a recent video, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky announced that Russia is being, beginning to change their tactics away from military bombardment to starving the Ukrainian people into su submission by seizing humanitarian aid and cutting off potential escape for refugees. 
Although not showing any results at the moment, peace talks between the two nations are still underway. So given that Putin took this step to, to uh, conduct this rally, what is, what is, in your opinion, how does Putin see what's going on here? Mm -hmm. He's clearly desperate for some kind of answer. Right. I think he's looking for a reaction, right? right? That is, I mean, the most of what he's been able to do is just like been really striking. I mean, mm -hmm. nothing that he's doing is uh, not on, all of it's on purpose, right? right? Yeah. He's very um, strategic in that. And so right. it's just really heartbreaking. Yeah, I'm hearing reports like, oh, he's bombing these places with right. civilians. How dare he do this? And right. it's like, he's doing it on purpose. Right. Yeah. right, right. I definitely agree that he definitely wants a reaction out of everyone because right. that's, I think it's a lot of, yes, he wants to take their territory, but he just wants attention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And exactly. I, I hate that for all of Ukraine right now. Yeah. I think right. it's crazy. Yeah, we're definitely paying the price for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll keep an eye on that as we move forward. But thank you for joining us at the desk, Will. To hear more about how the situation in Ukraine affects us right here in High Point, we learned from Brooke Ruffin about a student and her family who have been affected. On February 24th, millions of innocent lives have been changed forever as Russia launched a full-scale attack on Ukraine. Now a sovereign nation has been reduced to rubble as a result of the Russian invasion. Lives have been lost, families separated and displaced cities destroyed. There is a humanitarian crisis as a result of the war in Ukraine as families are fleeing the war. Almost two million refugees, half of them children, are in neighboring countries leaving everything behind. Their husbands, fathers, and brothers in search of somewhere safe. With the news and devastating tragedy, there are also images and stories of kindness, bravery, and resilience of the Ukrainian people. Although High Point University is thousands of miles from Ukraine, compassion and support run deep throughout the university for those affected. High Point University always comes together to support in times of need and crisis. Recently, High Point moms Michelle McGuigan and Jessica Andrish created a flag as a gesture for HPU students and staff to be able to show support for Annie Borofsky, a student at High Point University and her family. I had a chance to speak with Annie about the situation in Ukraine and what the gesture means to her. My name is Annie Borofsky. I'm a sophomore here at High Point University studying sport management and I am a first generation American Ukrainian. My parents were both born in Ukraine. My dad was born in Kiev, which is the capital, and my mom was born in Kharkiv, which is the second largest city in Ukraine. Um, there's a lot of news surrounding those two cities right now just because they're extremely, you know, heavy populated. That's where the Russian military is kind of aiming. Putin's plan was to kind of overtake Ukraine from the first 72 hours and he failed because they didn't think that normal civilians would, you know, stand up and fight. Kids as young as like six, seven, eight years old, like they're getting taken from their families and it's just heartbreaking. My cousin did flee to go and fight. He's actually originally from the country of Georgia and in kind of, in Georgia and in Ukraine, like my dad explained to me, their PE classes are like kind of military prep so it's like they they have the skills to go out and fight and help his family members some of my cousins that are still over there at the end of the day it is about you know fighting for what's right fighting for their country i think for me hearing my parents be emotional about it has been really tough last semester my freshman year um gail tuttle who is vice president of health and wellness um, she kind of connected with me and my family, and my mom kind of joked with her, like, oh, like, Mrs. Tuttle, um, you know, there's so many flags up on the promenade, um, why isn't there a Ukrainian flag? Like, didn't think anything of it, was kind of just joking around. I'm pretty sure within two weeks, Gail sent my mom a picture of the Ukrainian flag up on the promenade. I asked Annie Borofsky and HPU student Richie McGuigan what the gesture means to them. Just that small gesture of making my family feel included, um, any other like people of Ukrainian background on campus, it's definitely, it just shows how much the university cares. And with like the banner and even these cute little ribbons, <laughs> um, definitely just shows like the impact that High Point University has. My mom caught, thought of the idea and spoke to Annie's mom about it. We knew that we had to bring it to school <laughs> and have everyone sign it. And then that's when I went, came back to campus and um, got involved with somewhere, I just wanted to find somewhere to put this and have it be out there and this was the best thing that HBU had and I was so fortunate to be here today 
and have people sign it and witness it, and I always just had a huge smile on my face the entire time. What do you believe will happen in the future for Ukraine? As long as people get clear messages across and not kind of like the corrupt messages that Russia's sending out, and they get like factual truth that people's kind of heads will like, it'll switch and they'll want to stand up and do what's right. Annie's mother believes, quote, we will win this war. Russian president and his army can destroy our cities, but they never will destroy Ukrainian nation, spirit, and culture. It will be a long and very hard way to rebuild everything, but Ukraine will be more beautiful and united like never before. And I hope that our people, our president, our fight for independence, and our country show to the whole world that Ukraine deserves to be part of the European Union and NATO. Glory to Ukraine, end quote. This is Brooke Ruffin reporting to you live from High Point University. Thank you for the story, Brooke. Coming back from the break, we hear more about the campus involvement of a prominent student leader. Bring food to those in need. All access will be right back. Stay with us. Welcome to High Point University. On this campus, we are focused on preparing students for the world as it is going to be. Hi, I'm Steve Wozniak, the Woz, and I'm proud to be High Point University's Innovator in Residence. I'm Sint Marshall, CEO of the Dallas Mavericks, and I am proud to be High Point University's Sports Executive in Residence. I'm Mark Randolph, and I'm proud to be the Entrepreneur in Residence at the premier life skills university, High Point University. I don't remember how it started. Go to that. Oh Our back and forth. It always came back. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. I'm not gonna pay for this. Myth. I can party with people as long as they don't have symptoms. That myth is false. As we've seen, up to 40% of people who have COVID-19 are asymptomatic and can pass it on to others. So I'd recommend avoiding any social parties, especially indoor ones. If you wanna to try to socialize but reduce your risk, I'd recommend meeting outside in small groups, continuing to wear a mask, and socially distancing from others if you can. Then together, we can keep COVID-19 out of school. For ways to keep your community safe, go to backtoschooltogether.com. Welcome back to All Access. It's time for this week's Student Spotlight. Let's head over to Shreya Rana with today's special guest. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Student Spotlight. I'm Shreya Rana, and tonight I am joined by Mia Clement. Mia, how are you tonight? I'm great, Shreya, how are you? I'm good, so I know you're involved with so much on campus. Do you wanna tell me a little bit more about what you're involved with? Um, yeah, so I'm a pre-med biology major and a business administration minor. Um, I'm the vice president of biology club. I am the treasurer for the junior class and student government association. I am the treasurer for the Black Student Union, an ambassador for the Wannick School of Natural Sciences, a presidential scholar. Maybe I should stop now. Um, I'm a Dean's List recipient and I'm a student. That's oh all. Oh my gosh, <laughs> wow, that is a lot. Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to stay busy. Do you want to tell me a little bit more about your favorite commitment that you have? Um, I really love all my commitments. I do love this campus. I do love being involved at HPU. It's my favorite thing. Um, but I definitely do love Black Student Union. Um, it's a community that has definitely poured into me as a student and has offered me the biggest support system I've ever gotten. Um, so I do, I do love supporting the Black students on campus and I have a great time doing it. What do you do weekly for that? Um, so we have bi-weekly meetings um, with our general club members, weekly meetings with REC. Um, we plan lots of events. We have a really fun block party. That's an annual event that's coming up soon. Um, and as a treasurer, I take care of all the finances. So it's submitting bills, working on budgets, doing purchase requests, all the things that treasurers love to do. That's awesome. And I have to ask you, because I heard you mention biology club. Oh, yes. What do you do? 
We're vice president. Um, we do plan a lot of events also. So we are doing a CPR certification event um, with Sigma Nu, the fraternity, which is quite the collaboration, I will say. <laughs> um, but we are doing a collaboration event with them. We do um, various bi-weekly meetings with our club members. So we like to keep them involved. We just did a zoo trip. And then we often just do things related to the field of biology. That's awesome. So what advice would you have for students that want to get involved? Um, for students that want to get involved, I would say take your time. My freshman year, I did nothing but school and I focused and it really benefited me. So going into my sophomore year, I knew what I wanted to do, where I wanted to commit my time, and how I wanted to give back to the HPU community. Well, thank you so much for joining us, yeah, Mia. thank you. Back to you, Anna. Thank you so much, Shreya and Mia. Now it's time to hear the inside scoop on all things entertainment with reporter Claire Krantz. Claire? Good evening, everyone. I'm Claire Kranz here to give you this week's latest scoop on entertainment. Are Kylie and Travis Scott secretly married? Kylie se sparked secret engagement and wedding rumors this week when she posted a very interesting photo on her Instagram story. Her left ring finger had two very symbolic rings on it, a diamond filled band and a smaller gold band. Kylie has yet to comment on speculation that she and her on off partner, Travis Scott, are secretly married. But here's what we know. Kylie and Travis have mostly kept details about their private life and rekindled romance private. But Kylie started engagement and marriage rumors before and they turned out to be just rumors. Kylie threw fans off in 2019 as well, posting a photo on her story of her left hand with a huge teardrop diamond ring on it. I guess we won't truly know if Kylie and Travis secretly got married until there is an interview about it. But all I can say on the issue is that something feels different this time around for the two lovebirds. Moving on, just this morning, Miley Cyrus's plane was caught in a major unexpected storm en route to Paraguay and was forced to make an emergency landing. The Grammy nominee was supposed to headline the 2022 Music Festival in Paraguay when reports about her flight began to surface. Miley took to Instagram to explain what happened. She said, quote, to fans and everyone worried after hearing about my flight, our plane was caught in a major unexpected storm and struck by lightning. My crew, band, friends, and family who were all traveling with me are safe after an emergency landing. We were unfortunately unable to fly into Paraguay." End quote. On a lighter note, Amanda Bynes was freed from her nine-year conservatorship Tuesday, and everyone is dying to book her first interview since the judge's ruling. Amanda isn't being offered on-camera interviews, cover stories, and features alone. Amanda's attorney said that several production companies have reached out to her team about filming documentaries or potential reality shows about her life moving forward. However, Amanda's attorney told TMZ that while she is being flooded with offers, she is not ready to talk and is laying low for a while. That's all for this week's entertainment. Back to you, Reese and Anna. Actors Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher raised over $35 million to be donated to Ukraine refugees. This is a cause near to the couple's heart as Mila Kunis was born in Ukraine and lived there until she was eight years old. In their GoFundMe description, she writes, quote, Ukrainians are proud and brave people who deserve our help in their time of need, end quote. The money raised will be put toward humanitarian efforts as some of the money will provide temporary housing. Wilkesboro United Methodist Church packs food to fight world hunger. People of all ages prepared over 20,000 meals to be shipped around the world in partnership with Rise Against Hunger. This organization used to package up to 3.5 million meals a year pre-pandemic. It could only produce up to a million during the pandemic. This event in Wilkesboro helped get their numbers back up and help those in need. These meals could be shipped to Haiti, Nicaragua, or Zambia, depending on the urgency. So that is so awesome what the Wilkesboro United Methodist Church is doing right now. And same with Mila Kunis and Ashley. I agree. Kutcher. I mean, the level of impact that each of these different small acts, right? Mm -hmm. It just takes a little bit of effort from a community to really make a big impact. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, before we sign off for the night, we have to give a quick plug for our big entertainment broadcast coming to the screens this Saturday. HPU's The Voice. That's right. This Saturday, March 26th, join us in either the Hayworth Fine Arts Center or our channel for a live stream of the event. We'll start at 7.30 p.m. with doors opening for the live audience at 6.30. You can pick up your free tickets in Slane from 5 to 7 p.m. on Thursday or Friday or at the door on Saturday. 
I am so excited for the second time. Like, I think it's going to be, like, last year was super fun, but this mm -hmm. year is, like, bigger and better. I'm really excited. I agree. I think it's just going to be back and better than ever, mm -hmm. especially with a live audience. I know. I think the energy is just, you're going to feel it. Yeah, and we're going to be working behind the scenes and seeing everything yes, yes. take place. We're very I'm excited. So and that does it for our broadcast this evening. Thank you for watching. Join us next week, same time, same place. For HPU All Access, I'm Anna Harris. And I'm Reese Allen. Have a great week, High Point.